the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Is there like you? There's no one beside you, and I lead the earth to worship you. I lead the earth to worship you. Who is there like you? There's no one beside you, I leave the earth to worship you, I leave the earth to worship you. Hallelujah. Three things should happen to your life as a sign that you are growing. If you come to this place again and again and these three things do not happen in your life we are wasting your time please leave if you come here again and again and again and these three things do not happen in your life I can assure you do something better with your time number one transformation if the word of God is not changing you I'm not just talking about born again if the word of God is not changing you if the word of God is not changing your character your attitude your mindset hallelujah if you've been coming here for a while and you still hold on to the ideologies that you've had if there is nothing that is compelling you to change to drop those old ideologies be it cultural be it religious be it demonic be it worldly be it carnal if there is no force that compels you to lay down the ideology that you've had then you are not growing hallelujah when a man truly has an encounter with God, one of the things that must happen is transformation. 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 A change of mindset. A change of values. A change of ideology. A change of perception. Something must happen to your mentality. Listen. The word of God is a programming. The word of God is a programming. I told us last week, I went somewhere for a, a crusade and they were asking me, they said, what is the advice to Nigerian youth? I said, I don't have any advice for the Nigerian youth. The Nigerian youth, they don't need an advice. They need a programming, a change. Are you getting my point now? A change. Let me have someone. Aaron, good to see you. Hallelujah. Watch this. If this is the direction Aaron is headed, all right? If he's following this direction, I hope you know that he's taking this step based on a mindset. Is that true? Based on an ideology, based on a conviction, whether academic, whether cultural, whether religious, it doesn't matter. Now, what the word of God does is that when you collide with God through his word, there must be a force from the word 
greater than the force that was initially driving you and that force changes your state this is what we call repentance to repent is not just to confess your sin to repent is to lay down the ideology that take you into that realm and bring you into a new philosophy so that we can look at you and see that your thinking pattern has changed let me tell you if your thought life does not change if your mindset does not change you can limit god in your life hallelujah the bible says they limited god in the wilderness as mighty as god is a man's mentality can limit god for a long time god wanted to bless abraham but the mindset of the traditional worship the mindset of the culture he was coming from limited god god kept beckoning on him i want to make you a father of nations i want to make you great but abraham's mind could not cooperate with that which the spirit wanted to do and one day the lord said abraham come out of your house I I need to do something to your mind to align with my purposes for your life abraham come out he said now look at the stars let me give you something to play around with and when he tried counting the stars he said can you count them he said no he said so shall thy seed be finally abraham believed god and it was counted unto him for righteousness hallelujah the power of god is not short to change and bring miracles and breakthroughs it's just that we have been taught and 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 it's my job in the body of christ to always address imbalances and error on one side we've been taught that everything depends on god you have no role to play you just be born again and there is a smooth ride common sense teaches you that it does not make sense are you following me now then on the other hand we have men who are struggling just using concepts alone and human philosophy forgetting that there must be a god factor in the equation of your life both extremes are very very wrong all through scripture from genesis to revelation there has always been a partnership between god through his spirit and a willing vessel that can pay the price and allow his mindset to subscribe to the higher values of heaven hallelujah the difference between brother a and brother b is not the color of their skin is their degree of alignment to the holy spirit how much they have submitted their mindset to take up the higher mindset of the values listen the bible says my thoughts are higher than your thoughts is that true and and that word the the, the greek word word there word of god is logos it means the thoughts of god so the word of god gives you his ideology when you read my books you study my persuasions you study my convictions is that true so if you stay long enough with my books and you open up yourself to the influence of my thought patterns you will begin to think like me even if you've never met me we will talk as though we've been together this is the ministry of the word it's not just to make us speak christian language no the word of god is supposed to transcend it produces a force that force compels your mind to change to align to spiritual things so that when god wants to pass through your life your ideologies will not resist him hallelujah bless you Aaron. everybody say transformation are you being transformed it's not enough to come to church and sit down and keep writing is the word of god changing you you can limit the power of the word of god some of you can choose to walk out of this place wow nice sermon so this is how koinonia is like wonderful i'm impressed i'm blessed that can be your the the, the things that you are carrying back home and someone else can sit down and say lord i'm aware that my mindset is the reason why i am where i am my mindset has been limiting your work in my life you want to bless me but there's something in my life that resists you you want to lift me you want to make me great but there's something and i am aware so i come to man 
he needs to step into your soul realm and take complete charge of your mind your mindset so that your ideologies are a derivative of the word of god not culture there are aspects of culture that are good there are aspects of culture that are devilish devilish they were crafted out by wicked men sponsored by spirits that are not under the influence of the spirit of god and many of us have grown up with these ideologies and although you've gone to school although you are working although you are married that mindset is stopping god from doing certain things in your life many of us have gotten mindsets by from our past you have a mindset concerning fatherhood you have a mindset concerning marriage you have a mindset concerning money concerning prosperity concerning poverty concerning god concerning the holy spirit these are all mindsets that have been given unto us by a system that does not honor god so when we come into his presence we do not come just to say lord add to what i have sometimes you need to say lord open me up like a surgery right and pick out everything that does not align with your divine pattern everybody say transformation listen if the word of god is truly changing you then regardless of the fact that aaron is from kaduna state and ken is from the east you should have similarities in mindset because you have you have laid down your personal culture to pick up the excellence of the culture of a higher kingdom hallelujah but the issue is that many of us love seeing the power of god we love seeing the grace of god we love seeing people fall under the anointing and miracles happen and there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that is the word of god changing you the, the decisions you made last year if you still make those decisions today in spite of the power of god's word then that's what they call frustrating the grace of god hallelujah the bible says the days of our ignorance god overlooks right so if you do not know god can create a system by his mercy to help you but where the word of the lord comes it comes to build you it comes to take you out of your current position hallelujah say i allow the word of god to change me say it i allow the word of god to change me the worst evil you can do to yourself is to hold on to your mindset hold on to what you had that made you such a failure it was the failure that brought you to the presence of god and now god is saying lay down this thing pick up another culture that can take you your ministry is grounded because of a mindset that is keeping you lay down that mindset and pick up another your marriage is not working because there is a mindset that is keeping you your relationship is not working because there is a mindset men run away from you because there is a mindset women run away because there is a mindset the power of god is far favor is far from your life because there is an ideology that stands as an antichrist but when you come to god's presence he tells you lay down this mindset lay down this mindset that's your own responsibility to say lord all my life i've been taught that you must be a hustler to make it hit it left right and center i saw my father hustling i saw my mother hustling i saw my elder ones hustling and god says uh -uh, the kingdom of god is not haphazard come and let me teach you how the economic system of the kingdom works and you're like lord is there even a system and he says yes there is you can walk circumspectly hallelujah all your life you've always known that if a lady wants to marry she'll go to a herbalist with the picture of the person he wants to marry and one goat that's all you've seen people around you dragging goats to herbalist to chain a brother and force him to get married 
that's how you know it to be done now you are ready to get married and they say oh yeah where is your own good and god is saying uh 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 he says seek out of the book and read none shall want her mate so a new ideology starts coming and i'm telling you if you are changing it will create blessings and create persecutions at the same time because you live in an environment with people who have refused to change so your change begins to frustrate them if they are not fighting you you are not changing are you hearing what i'm saying something must change about your life everyone is used to bribing if you want job give this person through the back door 50,000 and they tell you look we're all Christians in fact I'm a pastor as you see me like this we all did it and the moment you want to do that a scripture rises up in you something changes is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am and a scripture wells up in you what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness and what communion has light got to do with darkness and you turn and tell them i'm going to cry but my god will give me this job i will not bribe anybody no bribery and they say look at how stupid you are talking nigeria this thing has been there he said uh -uh, i may be a nigerian but i function from another realm there is a kingdom that sponsors my life and i'm an ambassador and i can call on the embassy i represent it may take a while i may look stupid but god is able to make it happen the moment you speak you mount pressure on god because he's the one you are representing and for the sake of his reputation you cause him to step down but many of us are ashamed at such points you say i went to school how can i start talking about embassy heaven i please let's let's be reasonable what is fifty thousand? hallelujah before now your ideology has been the quickest way to be rich is pin down one rich man just find a even if he's not born again you will change him pin him down force him to marry you that's how they've been taught and there are many people here as you are sitting down some is your parents they've indirectly warned you they say have we not suffered in this life you say yes we have suffered say do you want us to continue like this they say no sir you say talk complete the puzzle by yourself what they are telling you indirectly is that no matter how born again this brother is once he has not arrived the promises are not there pack your load and go and some of you that's how you are looking and god is sending a very godly brother you are seeing him pray here he's sweating in your presence he's hearing the word of god that can change but because he has not gotten to canaan while you are sitting down kicking away men you will see a quick work that god will do in him all of a sudden saul who was a slave or a, 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 a somebody else will come in power and glory and you will now look and say ah oh god why didn't you show me a vision that this guy would change so fast say mindset say it some of you are already angry it's too early i've not started preaching it's too early this night could it be that there is a mindset that is frustrating you there are many pastors who are suffering and struggling in ministry because their mindsets about ministry will never change i said it last week they are looking for lifting quickly they want everybody to call them a pastor you call them aaron they say aaron you didn't add pastor that's a mindset because you think that is the title that gives the dignity He said if you call yourself the children of abraham do the works of abraham proof that you are the children of abraham indeed you don't move around saying i'm an apostle i'm a prophet i'm a teacher he said let her works speak for her at the gates who is god speaking to tonight your mindset is limiting him your mindset is limiting god 
your mindset is limiting God every brother that comes to marry you something happens and he leaves we have prayed for you we knew the day you were delivered so we are sure you are delivered but things have not changed that means there is a mindset problem listen it's not everything that is demons you must learn to take responsibility many of us receive solace in the fact that demons when you hear them say it's not your fault you say yes i've always known it's your fault this night you must take responsibility i've always known from my father's house they want to kill me but you were delivered everybody saw that god changed you why have things not changed because your mindset is a bigger demon an antichrist that is standing between canaan and egypt hallelujah there are christians who still cheat in the exam hall they say forget it i saw a pastor doing it with my own eyes ah i even know him if i mention his name you i saw him so what hallelujah what about living all kinds of immoral life in the world the primary purpose of relationship is for immorality it's not even for marriage it's just a an official way of looking for a partner to be sleeping around with so when a guy thinks he doesn't have enough courage to look around for ladies he goes to find somebody and say okay we're in a relationship they don't even know where they are going hallelujah and there are believers who love god some of you are here you are looking at me you see i'm not condemning you but i'm saying that 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 god must come face to face with the world and when it comes one must bow you cannot embrace these things and say let's go together it can go we can walk it no you cannot walk it light and darkness cannot stay in the same place don't say it does not matter let me tell you the truth if you want to see the authentic glory of god in your life no it matters and i always say this because many of us here are young people don't let anybody fool you and say everybody is doing it no sir there are people who have tapped into a higher law the bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord until you climb that hill it does not look like it's possible are you getting my point i counsel people i talk to people and there are people who come and say i love god but kai women hey I, I can't see women i don't ah, is, is it really true that there are people who are keeping themselves it's not by determination hallelujah if it's by determination maybe i would have had children that that would do children's service for koinonia but there is a grace that takes you so although you are human people say i beg jare you are flesh and blood no but there is a spirit that lives inside you the bible says know ye not that your body listen choose to believe this this night don't let it sound childish to you choose to believe if it was not possible god would be a wicked person for putting that as a principle hallelujah transformation there are some of us who can kill for money that's your own mindset you overcame ladies from bed you don't even have a problem with ladies because you you want to make it even if a lady stands naked in your front once there's no money on her you are living you are not the devil can the devil has been defeated when it comes to that one but money ha, ha, ha. you can be dying if they wave money you come back to life there are people like that they love money they can just put money on their table and just be looking at it like this they are not using it is is doing is like a drug they are taking your worst time in church is when they say giving of all sorts even if they don't mention you the fact that somebody else is going to drop money you take it past now you are not giving but just seeing that money is leaving somebody is it, paining you something is moving in your body advise this guy to take it back it's a spirit it's a dangerous spirit 
hallelujah there are many of us who have certain mindsets of laziness laziness hallelujah a man will sleep till one o'clock in the afternoon you are a man when do you want to marry next year till one o'clock you are still sleeping and you will see one of our sisters who has been trusting god preparing herself like a bride for a very nice person you just believe that because we say hug one another in koinonia it gives you a license to just get up carelessly and just go and meet a sister and say shabby they said let's get to know one another no are you preparing for that future i'm challenging you tonight say transformation what mindset have you refused to drop down romans chapter 12 Can you imagine that I've not even touched my message? Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12. Say the word of the Lord is changing me. Say it is changing me. It's building me. Romans chapter 12. Okay. Let's just turn there. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service verse 2 and be not conformed to this world but be ye what be ye how do you get transformed by the renewing of your mind you get transformed when you take your mind to the theater of the spirit and a surgery is performed the spirit of god himself and the surgical knife is the word of god that is able to cut across the bones and the marrows and it opens you up and begins to edit your life and when it is done you come back a brand new person hallelujah there are many of us those around you who are unbelievers there's no pressure that your life is bringing to them in fact they are more they are comfortable a guy can i'm not talking of condemnation and just pointing fingers at people and say you are going to hell no but that there is an illumination that your transformation can bring to anybody that is not serious with god that if somebody's prayer life is dying he doesn't even need to tell you all he needs to say is can i come and spend weekend in your house or in your room and they are so sure that at the end of three days something will change in their lives hallelujah there are some channels if you are walking in sin you will never want to turn to those channels perpetually 24 hours you will hear a message almost immediately within a space of five minutes that will judge you dove tv redeemed rtm you know that once you are doing something wrong you want to look for another channel that can accommodate what you are doing when you turn to those ones you hear papa adebo just give five minutes something is already flogging the nonsense in you can your life be like that that people are gossiping and and talking stories about others and as soon as you step in everybody just keeps quiet because a true ambassador stepped in one who will not compromise not that when you step in say hey come add add to this discussion what what were you even saying that day no hallelujah that in your office when they are mentioning men and women of integrity your name must be mentioned and they know that no if you want to throw this person try it another way bribery will not work even if it means him being demoted just forget it there is no issue of having a meeting with him it will not happen 
come on now listen if this is not happening in this place then we are wasting our time i don't care how many people fall on the ground roll on the ground even if you float in the air if it does not translate to transformation in your life then we are lying somewhere hallelujah so is your mindset changing ask your neighbor say is your mindset changing what did he tell you ask him who can verify that you are changing you can't call somebody that you bought something for in the afternoon to verify whether you are changing or not the answer will certainly be yes your enemy is the only person with the right to testify whether you truly fear God or not it was Satan that came to testify about Job is that true Satan himself he said ah no come on now I've seen a man Job Satan the father of all liars a man's integrity compels Satan to tell the truth he said I know I'm a liar I can twist things but this one there's nothing I can say against this man may that be your testimony that somebody can look at you and say I know I hate Ken let me tell you I hate him but when you are talking about a man who is a Christian indeed I'm an I I'm an unbeliever as you see me I don't fear God I let me go to hell but I can tell you this person have you seen people like that they don't respect God they look at you and say see see cigarette in my pocket but I can point to you who are the real men of God and you even be talking it was in Antioch when unbelievers called this set of people Christians those who were behaving like Christ not religiously something had happened to them see if your mindset does not change and you are trying to fake it it will frustrate you are you getting what i'm saying one day you will be tired if you don't have a revelation of giving and you are giving 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 one day when there's nobody you say kai i'm tired honestly thank god this my wicked roommate is not going to follow me for koinonia today i'm tired that's how you can see many people serve in the body of Christ. Immediately they leave to another geographical location within two or three months. They've changed in a way. You'll be like, uh-uh, this brother used to lead prayers. What suddenly happened? They really did not get it. I'm telling you, there is a way you get it. It becomes like a cancer in you. No matter how much you fall, you can't go too far. The, the, the fraternity is too much. It's like a cult. When you see people claim to love God and two months away from an environment of God's presence, they just change. They really did not get it. You can be among believers, I hope you know, doing what everybody is doing. But everybody knows the foundation and the root where he is standing. And the Bible says, let he that stands take heed lest he fall. So number one, transformation. Number two, three things that must happen in your life you're ready number two is that your life must bear fruits it must produce results write it fruits results the fruit in a tree is a sign that that tree has been well nourished and that it is alive and growing jesus caused a fig tree not because he did not see green leaves he caused the fig tree because it was taking up nutrients from the earth but it was not producing fruits your life must prove that god is at work in you not just by transformation transformation is good we talk about character and conformity but there must be results in your life everyone say results bishop oyedeko said the end of every argument is proof you don't argue with proof are you getting my point now when john the baptist sent 
that they should go and ask Jesus, are you the Messiah or should we expect another? Jesus did not even answer. He just turned, started healing the sick, casting out devils. He said, go and tell John what you have seen. Is this not the evidence that was given to him in the wilderness that the Messiah would do? Now see me doing it. Why are you asking again? hallelujah when you are a christian and you are excellent in your job they give you a task to do you do it with with a dimension of intelligence that is not known to those people there is a proof there are you hearing what i'm saying when you keep loving god and you get to a point look let me tell you if you serve god with time everything around your life should change I'm not one of those people who believes that you should just sit down of course in the process there are lots of things to contend against but with time there must be fruit that sign upon your life that God is with you even if you work for the devil even if you work for the devil one day ultimately he's going to destroy you but at least in the interim you will reap the the, the the evidence of allegiance. Is that true? There are all kinds of worldly people who are about to tag on. And although they are going to hell if they do not repent. But in the interim, they are enjoying heaven on earth. At least that's the consolation to keep them. Satan took Jesus to a mountain and said, Jesus, if you will bow to me, I promise you. Ah, yeah. I have I've not started preaching, you know. That's the problem you just look now and see that it's past nine i wish there was a way i can throw all these clocks out of this this place there's so much in my spirit to share hallelujah everybody say results say proofs if you claim god is calling you in a healing ministry it's okay that when we start nothing is happening but with time there should be the signature of god upon your healing ministry i do not know any healing evangelist who organizes a crusade and god does not confirm it if he's a true healing evangelist somebody should be sick somebody should arise from the wheelchair i do not know one true person who carries the apostolic spirit of god who struggles with fear and timidity and does not have the power of faith and the work of god in their lives i do not know one person like that except they are just talking stories are you getting what i'm saying say after time in the name of jesus may my life produce results many of you this is the level you are right now the reason why nobody has listened to you or subscribe to your ideologies is because they have not seen the benefit is that true and and, and and i want to be very honest with you benefit in every area of life financially maritally job wise in every area of your life no matter how critical people are let me tell you proof can close the mouth of anybody are you getting me you can criticize a man the greatest way to respond to your critics is not by answering don't waste your time they are determined not to understand keep trailing the proofs let the works keep speaking at the gates a point will come those they are talking to will say i'm tired of hearing your stories you where's your own proof hallelujah when jesus hung upon the cross about to die the bible says the atmospheric condition the climate just changed and those who looked there they just remembered and truly they acknowledged even in death they saw something there are many of us it will just take one proof everybody say one proof one proof for every unbeliever in your house to bow down they've grown in poverty they've suffered in poverty although that's not an ultimate reason to push them to god but trust me prosperity can bring men to god hallelujah when every herbal medicine has failed when every black substance they they tied in the leather 
and they told your father to chuck in the pocket of all his trousers to bring prosperity when he has put it in every pocket and it refused to bring prosperity and you come teaching the principles of the kingdom and things begin to change come on now you don't argue with proofs hallelujah may your life produce results in the name of jesus christ may you not be like the barren fig tree a fig tree with green leaves that means they are seeing you coming for koinonia every week every week to an extent that others can look at you and mock you and say where is your god i prophesy to you your god is coming through for you in the name of the lord jesus your god is coming through to silence every pharaoh that attempts to mock your god your life will produce result in the name of jesus christ results i believe in results i believe in results many of you are here by the grace of god not necessarily because you love me some of you don't even love me at all you don't plan to it's just that you need the results hallelujah but you are still welcome and the power of god is such that the results can be reproduced again and again and again that's why i love the anointing of the holy spirit you don't need to refrigerate it you don't need to give your neighbor to keep it for you and collect it on except you use talisman that's why i worship him take his presence and his glory out of my life many of you will see me on the street and pass as if you just saw a tire on the floor That's why I feel sad for people who want to come out of inferiority and complex and kick, they kick God out of the equation and they believe they'll be able to rise without him. Impossible. Impossible. If you are tired of your condition, the greatest way is to embrace God first. Hallelujah. Because God will take you out of every situation. Results. Your life must bear fruits in the name of the lord jesus christ say my life must bear fruit go ahead pray in one minute pray in one minute i don't just want us to talk it as stories my life must bear fruit my life must bear fruit My life must bear fruit i've been born again for many years no soul has come to the kingdom as a result of my life lord i'm tired i've been praying for the sick i don't have one verifiable testimony let this change oh god everyone i've prayed for for breakthrough they've returned with worse situations instead of making it better but lord i've told them you are with me change my story the finance of my family has not changed lord i'm not loving you just because of finances but if my finances change my father will follow me to church if my finances change if my loved ones get admission they will come to know you for their sake oh god let there be results in my life please pray i sense that god wants us to pray on this issue my life must bear fruits my life must bear fruits my life must bear fruit oh god i'm tired of a barren and unfruitful christian life my ministry is not growing pray because there's no proof my god people come and they leave 
if there are real miracles if there are real transformations they will come and stay everyone mocks my family in spite of our spirituality because they have not seen God change our level turn again oh God the captivity of Zion like the streams of the Negev let men see an evidence that God is with us pray say Lord let the marriage come even if it is to prove that Jesus is alive to prove that the witches and the wizards and the devils in my village do not have the final say Lord I know that there is a cause of poverty that lingers in my family but I've confessed your word that it is broken let it show in my life as a testament so that idol worship can stop in my family we have no right to tell men to stop going to herbalist if we cannot produce the proofs that God is with us we have no right to tell people to stop going to the devil to get children if we cannot heal the body we have no right to tell people to stop going to the devil to get money if we cannot prove that God prospers people lift your voice and pray get angry change my story change my story oh God I have served you in spite of the result but tonight I hold on to you change my story pray koinonia there is a spirit of intercession that has come upon the house pray change my story change my story change my story prove a point with my life make me an object of prayer silence the voice of wicked men many a day that rise up against me many a day that say where is his help but i will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help my help comes from the maker of the heavens and the earth oh god let there be a difference between those that serve you and those that do not serve you come on saints of god travel for your destiny there must be an evidence you have been transformed but there are no results there are no results men have a right to speak against your god lord hasten my miracle come on pray hasten my miracle hasten the breakthrough please pray god is answering people in this place lord give my father the job although my auntie is past menopause give her a child as a sign and a wonder that god is alive although my sister is 40 years old give her a husband that men may know that god is alive although my father was sacked from the job give him another one oh god to prove that you made me a prophet over my family lord you have vowed to increase my greatness produce results in my life come on koinonia pray produce results in my life that can silence men produce results that can prove that my god is alive i love him more than the results but in this season i desire to see the result command it command it increase my greatness let the blind see through my hands oh god for your glory pray let the wheelchair arise to silence principalities and powers open the heavens oh god and let prosperity come upon my life where i'll be rejected no man wants to identify with me make me an eternal excellency come on are you praying koinonia 
and a joy of many generations hallelujah 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 we'll take one prayer point before we settle down you're going to pray and say lord every power that stops my miracles from the heavenlies so that men will keep mocking my god tonight i command you to give way come on lift your voice and pray daniel prayed for 21 days the angel came and said daniel from the first day that you set yourself to pray your prayers were answered but the prince of Persia, the prince of Persia, the prince of Persia, pray i subdue powers i subdue powers that operate in the heavenlies territorial spirits i subdue powers in the heavenly realms i subdue powers workers of evil You must bow there is fire in my life there is fire in my destiny to burn every chaff everything god has not planted shake it off shake it off shake it from your life i shake away witchcraft i shake away divination i shake away enchantment come on now shake it off in the name of jesus no power can stand i am an infant of fire no enchantment no curse can stand against my destiny pray your prayer will bear fruits it will produce results pray the effectual fervent prayer Repetekete is our season of greatness. We went war against poverty. We went war against sickness. We went war against the works of darkness. It's our season to arise. Come on now, pray. Make your life too hot for the devil. Make your life too hot for witches and wizards. Make your life too hot for wicked spirits. Break the yoke from your neck. Break the yoke from your shoulders. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Tell the devil I stand in my priestly and my prophetic office. Tonight I confront you by myself. I confront you by myself. I confront you by myself. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 There must come a time in your life where you stop getting afraid and rise up and say, Satan, I've had the word enough. I don't need to wait for Friday again. Come into my room like Mount Camel. Let's solve this problem once and for all. They've not laid hands on me for nothing. They've not laid hands on me for nothing. One more time, we are going to pray. Come on, pray. This is breakthrough hey. prayers. This is breakthrough prayers. I sense the spirit of prayer and supplication. Power in prayer, there is power when the saints pray. There is power when you pray. 
Hallelujah. I feel an open heaven. I know when there is an open heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. I taught you on the speaking blood. We are going to apply the blood of Jesus. You are going to say, Satan. This is the price to release my destiny. I invoke the blood. Come on now, Koinonia. I invoke the blood. Every sacrifice that has been born and made, I invoke the blood. The blood of Jesus. I invoke the blood. I challenge the gates of hell through the blood. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The Listen, come, let me have four people. Let me show you what prayer does in the spirit. Let me just have four people stand here. Just, just turn like this. Face it. Stand. Just stand behind. Watch this. Watch this. Someone come and hold this. Anybody? This is your miracle. This is your breakthrough, but watch this. Stand there. Please shift forward. Paul said, listen. He said, a great door and an effectual has been opened unto me. He said, but many, many, many are the adversities. These are the spirits. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places watch this the bible says if any man afflicted let him pray if any man afflicted let him pray when you begin to pray watch this there is a force there is a force of the spirit that begins to mount pressure 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 on all of these things it's an ability of the spirit you push through barriers by the power of god's spirit until you take what belongs to you listen 
listen that's why god gives you one of the reasons why he gives you the prayer language of tongues praying in your understanding will weary you after 20 minutes the bible says you may not understand the dynamics on how to confront this spirit but when you switch to that prayer language the holy ghost hey yeah, 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 yeah. the holy ghost listen when you begin to pray something in the spirit come on pray pray When your prayer life rises, the devil must let you go. If you come out, pray. The devil will let you go. If you come out, pray. The devil will let you go. The Hallelujah. See, listen. There is a way you can pray. You will know when you break through. The reason is, the truth is, many believers don't pray. Hallelujah. There is a way you can pray. You will know your spirit is lifted from that realm. You will know an audacity comes upon you. You know you can shake off evil. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Before you sit down. You are going to say in the name of Jesus. I take back everything. The devil has taken from my family. Prophesy. Shita. Wapata keteria. 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 Hallelujah. 
Alleluia. Alleluia. The hand of the Lord is upon me. And I want to prophesy. As I prophesy, the power of God will be causing breakthroughs and restoration. The anointing of the Spirit is strong upon me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command every power holding anyone down right now in the name of jesus Amen. i command you let them go Amen. let them go Amen. right now Amen. let them go i prophesy breakthrough Amen. i command breakthrough Amen. in the name of the lord jesus Amen. i command breakthrough Amen. to your family breakthrough Amen. financial breakthrough Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. open heaven, open heaven, it's your season to rise, it's your season of greatness, every power stopping you, we challenge it tonight, in the name of Jesus, please sit down, God bless you, be seated. Your life must become uncomfortable for anything that is not of God. See, I tell you, the power of God is I sense such a strong anointing resting on people. As I teach, God is going to be visiting people in very strong ways. Enough is enough. God gave us a word. He said, I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. I'm not sure I can go into the details of tonight's teaching, but I hope I'll be able to touch. I really have a very serious revelation that I want to share. Let's see how far God can help us wherever we stop. Hallelujah. Genesis 1, verse 26. The Lord gave us a word that this year for us is a season of light and dominion. It's not just a word like many ministries have a word at the beginning of the year hallelujah light he said they that sat in nephtha and zebulun have seen a great light a great light genesis 1 verse 26 and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion let them this man i hope you know that when he was speaking the woman was still in the man because man adam not the name of a man dust hallelujah man was first created body has thou prepared for me hallelujah and then he brought about a separation between the man and the woman but before then he blessed them and he said let them have dominion now listen it is in the character of the spirit that the same word that brings you prophecy is the same word that prepares the way for that prophecy to come to pass are you getting my point the bible says when at the brook cherith when the brook dried it told elijah the prophet he said get thee go down to Zarephath." he said dear i have commanded a widow to feed thee but the woman did not sound like god had informed her a prophet was coming however the same word that took elijah to seraphat 
was the same word that softened the heart of the woman so when god gives you a word the word follows you through and makes sure that the path is clear until that word comes to pass are you getting what i'm saying so when god said let man have dominion that means there must have been a provision for that man to access what it takes to walk in that dominion hallelujah god does not just speak empty talk it's like sending a man to the market and not giving him money so let's see how god equipped man to exercise dominion in reality hallelujah genesis chapter 2 i wish we had time but i'll just touch briefly wherever thank you jesus verse 8 and the lord planted a garden eastward in eden and there he put the man that he had formed and out of the ground made the lord to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for food now watch this everybody look up the bible says god made every other tree to grow from the ground are you following me however the bible says there were two trees those trees did not grow from the ground follow me are you getting my point the bible says god made to grow every tree prison to the eyes that is good for food then it says the tree of life also also in the midst of the garden and then it says and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil please follow me i want to teach you powerful spiritual laws that can help you to walk in dominion to eat of every tree including the tree of life are you getting my point the first revelation i want you to have is that man's eating the tree of life was not for hunger are you getting me adam could not be hungry he was not in the fallen state are you getting me in the realm of the spirit you don't eat for hunger for hunger you eat for impartation and knowledge that's what food does in the spirit food does not satisfy hunger no no when you eat food like let's say in spiritually now i'm not talking of all these demonic things that people you saw yourself eating suya in the dream that's not what i'm talking about hallelujah you don't eat in the spirit to satisfy hunger food does two things for you in eden's atmosphere one it gives you knowledge two it gives you impartation hallelujah that's why the prophet was giving the word and he ate it when he ate it it did something to him are you getting what i'm saying now watch this everybody write the mystery of forbidden knowledge that's not the topic i want to show you what the two trees were supposed to represent one was the tree of life the other was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil another word was the it it carried what we call the mystery of forbidden knowledge the word mystery just means hidden truths about a knowledge that god does not want his people to know not because he hates them you must understand this god does not want us to know everything and then i will show you what the angels came and did the fallen angels when they came they did something to the daughters of men are you getting me they took from this forbidden knowledge and they began to feed mankind with it ah. time, 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 time. praise god God categorically warned man. He said the trees in the garden of Eden, every time you eat them, they will do something to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, if you eat of the tree of life, it will keep giving you the revelation and the insight to walk in dominion. It gives life. 
eating of that tree gives life are you getting me that's the mystery of eternal life adumbrated by that tree that's why when jesus came he said ah, ah man shall not live by bread alone if man wants to live he must keep eating something are you getting me so walking experientially for eternal life to be culminated in you there is something that must be done in you please listen and this is where i want to balance this is what where we get the concept of immortality how many of you have heard all those teachings of immortality now unfortunately many people brought the teachings but they did not understand how the operation immortality is not something you claim immortality is a product of eating of the tree of life again and again it causes eternal life not just to translate from your spirit to your soul but to happen in your body and that's where you say oh death where is your sting are you getting what i'm saying now it so happens that our rate of transformation is so slow are you getting me now that the degradation of the sin nature in our body catches up with us before these capsules of rejuvenation find expression in us this is why although the law of immortality is at work not many people will ever enter it the secret is not just prayer for long life the secret is intercoursing with this eternal life that was how adam was supposed to live forever are you getting my point now so by eating of the tree of life that was why when he fell god said no you can't eat of the tree of life again because the tree of life keeps you in whatever state you are and stops you from dying if he ate of the tree of life salvation redemption would not be possible again so god drove him out are you seeing that now god didn't just drive him because he was angry he drove man out of the garden because he loved him praise the lord what is this i want to explain to you what is this mystery of forbidden knowledge look up how many of you have heard of certain books called the books of moses right 10 books of moses 11 books of moses how many of you have heard of all these extra biblical references that were written by egyptians and written by all kinds of people have you heard of those kinds of things how many of you have heard of people that lived long ago in mountains who wrote certain books that were found now listen if i don't teach you this because the lord began to reveal to me that this is the strategy the devil is bringing when the angels do you know why god did not want man to know i hope you know that adam never knew adam never knew that before his coming there was a history hallelujah he had never eaten of the tree that gives the knowledge of good and with it comes evil are you getting me Adam was supposed to eat of the tree of life and continue his intimacy with God and reproduce children after his kind. When Satan came into the garden, Satan did not make Adam sleep with a dog. No, he knew that that would not get the agenda done. He said, man, come. There is one tree I want you to touch. Just taste it once. It will do something to you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Everybody say forbidden knowledge. This is the information that through sorcery and witchcraft, please hear me, the fallen angels and all of these aliens and all of these devilish spirits, they downloaded and brought to inhabitants in the earth. Are you getting me? These were the informations that were given men like Nimrod. So they had super intelligence about certain things. Are you following me? I want to shock you i hope you will believe me look at me did you know that most of our technological advancement are you getting me are as a result of fraternity with beings that were not in the earth are you getting me it had to be a supply of a level it's not just human discipline don't mind what all those books tell you just be hard working and think well no sir 
those people had interactions with things is that how did solomon become extremely rich and blessed what happened to him god visited him from another realm is that not true they had a conversation listen this conversation is still happening in the earth till today are you following me let me share with you something very briefly i hope you believe me the bible says jesus was given the parable of the wheat and the tear is that true he said while men everybody while men hold on he says while men slept something happened in the earth realm where men were sleeping now the sleeping is not bad we always use that sleep to mean while men were backsliding no he meant literal sleep that means there is something that cannot happen when men are awake are you getting me jesus was telling us something powerful he says the moment men sleep some beings can walk into the earth and he said the enemy quickly comes plant something and goes his way so you wake up with a growth that was not there before you slept is somebody following me what happened who came and put it there while men slept are you seeing why the bible says the keeper of israel neither nor it says every time men sleep something happens in this earth realm there are certain beings that come into the earth realm that's why people sleep in the night and in their dream realms they have all kinds of encounters with beings and animals and all kinds of things happen from intercourse to eating to every kind of thing and they wake up the next day only for them to fail at work or fail in exams something happened while men slept the psalmist saw this in psalm 91 and he says thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day right not the noisome pestilence but many believers are dull of understanding dominion dominion is not just a function of i claim it there is spiritual intelligence that can bring you into that position where you walk in dominion are you hearing what i'm saying please are you getting something so these three of the knowledge of good and evil was never supposed to be consumed by man are you getting me look, look at me when you open that book you will find good but you will not know when evil is planted in the good are you getting what i'm saying that's why a pastor can go and read the 12th book of moses or go and read scientology and be looking at it and saying wow so candles or certain things can do something to witches and wizards everybody say forbidden knowledge are you getting that now and then they read certain zodiac books and they look and they say why not i add this knowledge to what i already have are you getting what i'm saying and they will seem to walk powerfully that is the forbidden knowledge the tree of the knowledge of good and evil sometimes we celebrate it what do we call it rema is that true and we bring all kinds of things i've heard about men of god and prophets and all kinds of people who do every kind of nonsense in the body of christ all kinds of magic happening everywhere i once heard of a man of god who came for a program and he was preaching and he called somebody he said look at me the person who looked at him became blind at once yes completely blind at once members were clapping people were running to come and drop seed i don't know what they were tapping into but they were running and everybody was happy watch this and then after the guy preached 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 he did everything and then he prayed again and the guy was open and he said for that reason 
everything that is close in everybody's life you know I, I open it and you see everybody just shouting amen listen let me tell you listen listen will people get results they will get tremendous results are you hearing what i'm saying because the laws that have been operated are valid spiritual laws but this is the point because it was not initiated and sponsored by the spirit of god although it is correct knowledge it is called witchcraft so it's not about what produces result it's about the spirit of god initiating and sustaining that process hallelujah there are many teachings coming to the body of christ men and women of god who went to lock themselves to pray for three days and seven days or whatever and in the midst of this prayer because many people did not exalt the word above prophecy they had visitations but they were not of god however they were not visitations of inhabitants of the earth and they came and committed to them power and gave them all kinds of things and they came out from all of those experiences and you see power you see anointing but it is not initiated and sponsored by the spirit and the sign is number one the glory never goes to god such kinds of people never give god the glory because it is part of the agreement are you following me now it is god's desire that we grow the bible even said knowledge shall increase but you must guard when the table is set before you you are only permitted to eat of the tree of life there is a kind of knowledge that only puffs up have you seen people hold on i want to say a few things that will challenge you have you seen a lot of people please i don't mean this for criticism or anything have you seen a lot of people who got mad as a result of prayer have you have you seen those kinds of things that somebody got to pray and he started praying until they took him to the psychiatry and locked him i remember a lady years ago this lady was praying in tongues seemingly for about almost 48 hours i was there abu secure this girl was just praying 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 she wouldn't listen to anybody i wish i knew what i know now and the thing confuses the body of christ hallelujah everybody say forbidden knowledge man of god if you are in ministry here you have to be very careful that that insatiable lust for rema and revelation you must guard carefully and let this that's why walking in the spirit is the secret it gives you life when you walk in the flesh you may learn a lot of principles that although they are powerful it leads men to death so the more revelation a man is getting the more he's dying not to self dying as a result of the absence of light see this is how you know is one character to know that a man is not of god when you compare the rate of revelation versus the rate of transformation when there is so much word conferences happening conventions happening meetings happening rema upon rema bible study all kinds of things yet you do not see that that word is chaff it lacks the life to build people there is error i hope somebody is learning something here God put two trees and all the trees can supply knowledge for one it is the knowledge that brings life there are certain teachings on deliverance that does not bring life is that true there are certain teachings on deliverance that brings people into bondage because people added Bible knowledge plus confessions that they got from people who were once witches and wizards is that true and they added everything and they say if you want the devil to run away from you 
Once it's nine o'clock, wear red. That that one is not in the Bible. You see that? That is that is deception dimension there. I, I, is somebody following what I'm saying? I apologize if maybe these are the tenants of your church or your ministry. I really apologize. I love the body of Christ, but I have to teach you the truth. So there is the biblical concept of deliverance, for instance. Then there are others who have spent their entire life interviewing seemingly witches and wizards, begging for audience with herbalists to explain to them the realm of the spirit, knowing that Satan is the father of all liars. Are you getting my point now? And it is on the strength of those information they have built their prayer ministries or built a lot of things. So when you want to pray for somebody, you look and say, uh-uh, I can't pray for you like this. You are wearing a black shoe. Change it into a special kind of slippers that you wear when you enter my, my this thing for the power to work. This one is astrology and witchcraft. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Or you get all kinds of candles with different colors. This flame, that flame, this flame. And you say, now come and sit in the midst of it and just be calm as I drive this spirit. Uh -uh. This is called transcendental meditation. This is witchcraft. Hallelujah. Yet, you come and sit down in the midst of that candle. Something suddenly happens to you and you start taking first in the class. All of a sudden, your intelligence is heightened. You think beyond your level and because you're following my story please because you are getting results you will be encouraged are you hearing what i'm saying be careful because many people are eating of the forbidden tree they are eating right now today here and now they are getting access to knowledge that seems to be producing results thank you but that knowledge is not of god Maybe some of us right here as you are sitting down are already in these deceptions. The moment you read those books, although they are blowing your mind, but something in your spirit starts checking. The Holy Ghost is telling you, uh-uh, when did you get into this? When did you get into this? And you see, these books are in our libraries. You can get them online. Many of you have watched every kind of thing. You see a man who has supernatural ability to listen to plants and animals and you sit down there are all kinds of books people research online how to hear the language of plants and animals and they put all kinds of codes they say recite it by 12 or 1 many Christians you get up carry your big head and stand in front of the mirror and now recite it the last you recite it and just wake up and see that it's morning you slept something happened to you you may not know what happened again anytime god wants to take in and bring out of a man sleep happens and god calls adam to sleep hallelujah are you understanding this we're talking about dominion through through spiritual intelligence the knowledge that leads to death i'm going to share with you very importantly very quickly two laws even if it's just in five minutes wherever we stop that's it for the night two important spiritual laws that can help us i'm committed to making sure that god grants us spiritual intelligence that we have knowledge this is what makes you strong in the spirit prayer is good but it's not just enough to pray you must have knowledge so that when you see things you know what laws are in place and you know what to do about them knowledge takes away ignorance knowledge takes away shock from your life so that you are not surprised about anything when you hear that something has happened you don't just panic you understand hallelujah praise the name of the lord 
law number one is called the law of territory if you want to walk in dominion you must understand this law the law of territory everybody say the law of territory look up please dominion is territorial dominion is territorial even in the satanic organogram they understand the jurisdiction and the boundaries of territories there are spirits and principalities that do not operate in the earth realm it's not their territory of work are you getting me every time they are on the earth realm they are powerless there are certain demonic operations that are territorial i give you an instance when you go to certain territories in this nigeria you see that there are certain traits and satanic operations given to that territory when you go outside of the territory it doesn't seem to have a hold on you again is that true and you go into another territory maybe it's drunkenness that is there you go to another territory maybe it's lust and immorality the operations of the kingdom and the operations of the spirit are territorial every man every kingdom citizen must know this abraham come out of your father's house come out of this territory where you are into a land that i will show you and if you do get to that land then i will bless you and you will be a blessing i will bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed but that will only happen if you leave one territory to another everybody say dominion is territorial it's a spiritual intelligence that you must understand number two is that you must understand very very clearly that in the place of your assignment that is where you will exercise true dominion everything opens up for you at your assigned territory there is an assigned territory where the spirit of dominion can walk in your life hallelujah this is what a lot of people do not understand please look up you must take out time to hear from god are you getting me as to where he wants you to be at every season not just what you want him to do for you but where your blessings are territorial and isaac sowed in that land genesis 26 from verse 12 and isaac sowed not just in any land although there was famine god told him this is your territory of dominion so in that land a man of god may go to zamfara and sit down and say zamfara is not a lucrative place let me run to abuja for ministry and he goes outside of territory are you getting my point and you see a man struggling in a land of plenty he's struggling yet you will see another man in the same zamfara blessings coming from people those who are born again and those who are not born again because you are in the place of your territory say the law of territory many of us right now are at the face of our lives where we are trusting to know where god wants us to settle for every season it can change but that in every season there is a territory you miss your territory you will never walk in dominion because where god has assigned you he has commanded the ravens to feed you he has commanded the widow to attend to you are you getting what i'm saying i'll never forget when we finished the crusade in joss and the pfn people called me in the particular local government in joss and they said would you come and establish a branch of your ministry we'll give you an auditorium free and we'll give a few pastors to train i was happy i went to god god said you would die i told the pfn people god said i would die i'm really sorry i can't go as simple as that many of you would have said ah breakthrough god has butter my bread 
and you will go there that's why you can see a ministry flourishing in a, in a particular place and then they move to a place and it's as though god did not call them again favor is a sign that you are in the right place when i sent thee lackest thou anything when i sent thee lackest thou anything By the grace of god at this level of ministry i can tell you i am sure that we are in the place assigned that's why it doesn't matter what venue we use whether it is blue roof whether it is charity and faith whether it's whatever there seems to be grace backing us so many people have called me one lady said them and their family members they are praying that i must come to abuja they say relocate your level is bigger than zaria i said i appreciate you but i remember there was a man called ahitophel in scripture Don't let people advise you out of your destiny they may be genuine they look at you and say kai zaria is it's too much for your level you say it's true just that what will we do and you start thinking and pack your load out of your destiny into a land where there is no assigned space for you you get into the land and there is no divine assignment for you there's no space for you you keep fighting and struggling with everybody Moses said, if your presence will not go with us, let us remain in this territory where we are sure that your presence is with us. This may be the answer to some of the tragedy of many of our parents. They got up because of looking for greener pastures. They just packed their load and said, Lagos, here we come. Ten years now, they are still suffering. every door shuts at your face it's a sign to go back for retreat and say lord speak to me speak to me where am i missing it don't just let jobs and all of these things decide your destiny i know this looks like a, a stupid statement and many people will criticize me for it they'll say are you joking in nigeria where there's no job but you must be careful you exercise dominion in the place of your territory your territory does not just mean the geography alone it means your jurisdiction of operation are you getting me if i go and enter the prophetic ministry right now as an office i'm not a prophet as an office i may operate in prophetic dimensions but god did not call me as a prophet in, in officially like your office your jurisdiction if i now say i'm going to come in and make sure i prophesy for everybody one by one i give you two weeks many of you will start praying and fasting for me because you will start having all kinds of dreams of me missing it you say oh god what is happening this guy is missing this thing there are many men of god who were called to be teachers or pastors but they they got outside of territory are you getting what i'm saying now there are other people who were called into prayer ministries their anointing is the anointing for intercession but they've now begun to teach wealth seminars and teaching all kinds of prosperity conventions that's not wrong except that you have come out of territory everybody say territory you will only walk in your dominion if you confine yourself and limit yourself to your territory your jurisdiction of operation there are certain dimensions of ministry if god instructs me to engage in i will find graces that are called at the heart of that area and bring them it doesn't matter whether i can preach more than them it doesn't matter whether i have more miracles than them uh -uh. it's about the grace and the dominion when a man is in his area of territory you will exercise dominion freely you see why a lot of pastors are struggling you go to a church and copy what a man of god is doing you do not know his his ministerial packaging are you getting my point so many people who are pastors trying to do the work of apostles little persecution comes and they are crying they cannot move forward because see when god calls a man he equips you according to the office when you learn this law you will walk in dominion absolute dominion there are things i have no business doing 
if God gives me an instruction, he will have to give me a special grace for it or direct me to the people who will administer that level of building to the body of Christ. Watch my knee calls it the limitation of the body. People struggle because they do not understand their jurisdiction of operation. Is someone getting blessed tonight? Your assigned territory. God has honored you in the area of catering. When it comes to catering, you walk in dominion there. The next thing you got up and you just heard that people are doing um, building materials and you just get up and go there you say i'm supplying building materials your first supply there was trouble second supply 10 years down the line you are still struggling everybody say territory thank you jesus the second law and then we will pray this one is very important it is a law that you must believe in and walk in it it's called the law of exchange this is a powerful spiritual law if you must walk in dominion giving something you love for something you desire is called the law of exchange the law of exchange you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today you reign in heaven and now exalted i really want to worship you my lord you are my heart and i am yours forever and ever i will love you you are the only one who died for me you gave your life to set me free and so i lift my voice to you in adoration listen how many of you have heard that a man gave up his ability to give birth to children for money have you heard of that everybody say the law of exchange when you understand this law you will know the reason why evil seems to happen in a place unhindered when the bible says an eye for an eye have you heard that tooth for tooth i've studied it it's not like when i break your teeth you will break back my own to revenge are you getting me it's called compensation that means if i do something to you you must take back something that can appease you to the equivalence of the offense are you getting what i'm saying it's called the law of exchange that's where we get trade by butter i give you a cow you must find something that is commensurate to the worth of that cow are you getting me that's why when man fell based on the justice of god god looked around to see what can be given he said if i give gabriel it's not enough if i give michael it's not enough do you know why because angels themselves are imperfect i hope you know it angels excel in light they excel in strength but they are still imperfect do you want me to show you joe let's look at it one scripture you are the one who said i should show you Turn to the book of Job. Sorry about the time. We'll round up now. He could not give the angels because they are imperfect. Job 4. Please project it. Job 4, verse 18 and 19. 
I want us to read it together. Job 4. Can we hurry up? Our time is. Job 4. Everyone read. Want to read. He charges angels with what? Verse 19. He said, even his servants, he didn't trust them. And even the angels, he charged them with foolishness. How much more a man that wants God to use him without being trained? <laughs> so God could not give Gabriel and Michael and all of these people. And so he looked at the perfect one, the sinless one, and said, you are the only one that can go as an exchange for what I desire. Please listen to me. The same principle Satan wanted to use for Jesus Christ. He took Jesus to the mountain and he said, bow to me. In other words, let me give you wealth and exchange it with your loyalty for me. Are you getting my point? Just bow to me. Since you are the expression of the Godhead, bow to me so that the Father will see you bowing to me and I can give you wealth. So when a man goes to meet a herbalist, it tells him what are you going to give me in exchange please listen i will tell you this is the reason why many territories are powerful this is why some of the terrorisms you see in nigeria are powerful they always give something in exchange for the authority to invade a territory that's why they do it military might irrespective are you getting my point when you come to god and say lord i want you to use me god says what is the exchange for it and he said lord take my life have you heard that scripture that says what shall it profit a man if he does what and what loses his soul that means he said satan let's do business and satan said of course i'm a good businessman i will give you my soul give me the world so that anywhere I do business, whether in Italy, whether in Dubai, let it work. So that I must be the governor of this state or I must be this, take my soul. So that I will be the reigning musician and nobody can stop me. And he says, alright, let's have the deal. And he says, take my soul. They have received the mark of the beast. That's the 666 there. It's not something that will be put on their hand. They have given their soul. They have received the mark. Are you getting my point so satan comes to you what do you want to give in exchange please listen something must be given in exchange if you must walk in true dominion everybody knows this it's not a herbal strategy it's a spiritual strategy i'm walking in the anointing i'm walking in by the grace of god because i received this of grace but something went for it my life my will my ambitions my desires they were laid down that's why i wrote that song take all of me all of me you have my everything that's my deal with god you have my everything are you getting me so my entire life will give him glory the day i compromise on my own part of the deal his mercy will show up but if i walk in rebellion i have broken the deal that's the reason why a man can give an exchange he will say i will give you my firstborn only give me this political position when the firstborn is now born the people come and say oh yeah oh, we gave you the power we gave you the wife where is our firstborn and he says sorry I didn't realize that children are this nice i've changed my mind they say you've changed your mind we will see all of a sudden the child starts getting sick they must collect their child except the power of god intervenes this is the reason why many families are suffering people covenanted families in exchange for money kings covenanted their territories are you hearing what i'm saying they gave it in exchange for protection they gave it there are families that gave in exchange their fertility so no children
can happen in that family there are families that traded boys they said there shall be no men take give us might what men would have done let the women in our family do but take all the men and you find out that no matter how people try they will never give birth to men they give birth to men they will die no matter what happens you just hear that he was taking fresh air outside a bike came and carried him are you hearing what i'm saying exchange see these laws are not old testament laws they are spiritual laws they are still working today here and now are you hearing what i'm saying this is the law that terrorists use before they ever carry an assignment they must take out time are you seeing the reason why every time they shed blood people become richer think about it the moment blood is shed somebody makes money exchange 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 are you seeing the reason why the sacrifice of solomon touched the lord he offered a thousand bond offerings it was an expression of his heart god could not stop he came down many of us may never walk in dominion because you are not ready to exchange your life for his life you are not ready to exchange your strength for his strength but tonight how many people are ready to say lord take everything if this is the price for your grace and your glory don't let anybody fool you and say there's no price you go to a herbalist and see if he will just give you power like that look at me there are men who sacrifice their wives for wealth true or false some christians right there are pastors who sacrifice their children for church growth there are pastors who sacrifice their members for expansion i've said it again and again nothing just happens the day jesus will come we have a long wall film to watch that's when we will know that most of the things we call coincidences were not coincidences hallelujah listen let me tell you something i will never forget one time i was praying in the night years ago and i prayed and i was dedicating my body unto god i stripped myself the way my mother gave birth to me and i lay down on the floor i said lord let this body become a superconductor of your anointing if there is anything you can do to this mortal body let it carry your power this body cannot be used for sin and hell it, it i dedicate it unto you and god said this is what you are giving me i will put my glory upon your life and somebody just comes and says, god give me give me give me give me give me and the lord the demons are just looking and say look at all these ignorant people these are the negotiations that many scientists did with aliens are you getting me many intelligent people they said give us give us technology give us the wisdom you used and gave the pharaohs of old give us and let us do supernatural things in exchange we will give you the souls of men we will give you mankind we will give you a lot of things and it's happening here in the earth that's why you can see a man sitting down all of a sudden within two weeks this man becomes a mysterious millionaire either god has done something to him or the devil has done something there was an exchange somewhere a man of god is sitting down and all of a sudden power comes upon his life he begins to do supernatural things i tell you there is an exchange he has either gone to the throne of grace to exchange his life and say lord take it take my life and use me for your glory or he has gone to a herbalist and say take my firstborn or every two two years kill 10 members from my church as a sacrifice and let the anointing keep rising the life that i now live paul told us the secret of his anointing he said the life that i now live i live by the faith of god i surrender all to you everything i give 
I'm teaching you spiritual laws withholding nothing withholding nothing listen you can copy a man if you have not laid down what that man laid down you will never carry what he carries are you hearing what I'm saying you can copy the way he talks you can wear suits like him if you cannot lay down an exchange what that man exchanged in the secret place you will never that's why you can listen to a message that may not be so powerful by a man of god but tremendous grace follows it because there is a fraternity with god that's why you can see a herbalist he can make people millionaires but he lives in a coven it was the exchange for the power he can make people billionaires but he will never stay in a big house he will never wear good clothes he will wear rags papa Deboe, i said it last week he's made it a vow and a culture that everywhere he goes he will get down on his knees that was his exchange for the kind of glory what are you exchanging let me tell you when you enter into the realm of the spirit you will see men who have exchanged things men who have given their souls to herbalists they want the same job you want they want the same business you want they are killing human beings and sacrificing it and you are just standing lukewarm there is no sacrifice there's no exchange and you believe in the labor market and compete with them there must be an exchange it is this exchange that will end sickness in your body is this exchange that can make angels come and cover your plane so that it will not crash it's not just about you you have exchanged something in the spirit he said i shall not die this is the exchange for living long i will live to declare there are some people that are unkillable it's not about confession i will leave you don't know what they have done in the secret place that's why god can kill a whole nation for the sake of that man jacob have i loved esau have i hated when laban laban did not know the exchange he didn't know what happened between the mother of jacob and esau laban wanted to cheat jacob that anointing came and animals started reproducing after the the the, the colors of jacob's animal and Laban said, ah, I testify that God has blessed me. Listen, when a man has made an exchange in the realm of the spirit, you touch him to your own detriment because there is an altar that speaks for him. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. Listen. This is why you can see certain people shout and say i can never be poor they say i can never die i've told you i remember when i packed everything that i had home and abroad i put it in one bag and i went to a prosperity convention my entire life belonging home and abroad aside from the current clothes that i was wearing it took a sacrifice to put your family in the covenant of poverty it will take an exchange to bring them out don't let any man fool you i dragged those things to the altar i sat down outside like the overflow like this i know we've taken time but what i'm sharing is somebody's deliverance tonight any powerful man you see from today let me tell you something there was an exchange is an irrefutable spiritual law either to god or to the devil crowd does not just come are you hearing me koinonia people are not just coming because they want to come there is a force there is the strength of sacrifice unto god a covenant of teaching truth it's a fraternity with god oh god bring the people and i will teach them truth bring the people and i will teach them no matter what it will cost me and god said the deal is done and a young pastor just gets up and believes that is by church growth principle you come posters everywhere knock from door to door and the realm of the spirit is saying do you not know there is a law
enough of that kind of Christianity where in a crowd and a multitude of people only less than 10 people are serious with God and that becomes the pride of the pastor it's time we begin to shout until the least among us become as great as people where every one of us can stand by himself and legislate on behalf of the parliament of heaven where every one of us can stand for truth and be a voice that declares the word of the Lord in every area of ministry and life that God will find an ambassador in you this is our mandate and we can change this country we can change the continent of Africa and we will because there is an ability beyond us Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please look up everybody. How many of you have been blessed and changed by Koinonia in all sincerity? The day we stop ministering the word to you, God has a right to seize ministry from us. Because from that time, we become showmen and actors on stage. Hallelujah. Let me show you something. Ephesians chapter 2. I hope that one day when you become a pastor, look at me. When you become a pastor in future and you make slavery out of your members, we will call you and will ask you where you learned it from. Hallelujah. The reason why we are careful with our lives many times is so that we do not sow the seed of bondage and corruption in the hearts of many people. And so we allow death to walk in us so that life will walk in you. Hallelujah. Paul said, follow me as I follow after Christ. Run away from all this wrong concept of ministry and concept of glory where you dominate your fellow man in a bit to show you are great. The greatest in the kingdom is a servant. Humility is a revelation. It's not an act. There is a revelation that keeps you in that state. Hallelujah. Away with that ambition of lording it over people and have, I fear people that serve me. I've said this thing for years. Till today, I'm not able to call people sons and daughters because I know how of much of a baby I am in the presence of God. And so what is the extent of grace that will make me call someone a son or a daughter? And I run away from these kinds of things. Because I know that anybody that assumes a position of honor will be judged even more. Make sure your priorities are defined about life, about leadership, about ministry. Kill away the wrong mindsets that we have received. Where you lord it over people. That's not the way of the Spirit. When the Spirit of God finds expression in the life of a man, if all you have to show for your yieldedness is that you can blow and people fall down, you are still a baby in the spirit. Hallelujah. We must be built and be mature. Men of character, men of grace, men of humility. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Alright, let me have... Um, Please, as I make these calls, it will belong to this category. Just run out quickly. I will embarrass you. Let me have someone that knows God is calling him in the place of ministry. Just one person. One, God is calling you in the place of music. Come out quickly as I'm calling. Just if you are bold and you are confident, if you are thinking about it, just remain there. One person, you are what? Music. Do you sing? Button your other shirt. You should leave only one. Dress properly. 
Hallelujah. What of you? Music. Hold on. I just need come. I'm not praying. We are doing something. How, okay. Um, music, all of you. Okay. Don't worry. Just, just go back to your seat. Appreciate them, please. I just need one person. Music. Okay, let's have two of you. Someone in fashion and design. Fashion and design. Quickly. Who will... Make sure it's what you are doing, not dreaming about yet. At least that you have a seed on ground. And make sure when you come out here, you dress properly. Don't dress like a hooligan. Dress like a leader. Right? Don't come out with, with comb in your pocket and you're laughing. No. You are, you dress like you know where you are going. Don't look like a foolish person. It's touts that look like that. Hallelujah comb your hair, you look smart. You look like where you are going. Don't dress like a thief. That's why they keep stopping you on the road. <laughs> Hallelujah. Alright, let's have someone in education. Education. Someone who is education. Anybody? You know God is calling in the area of education. Please appreciate them as they come. Someone in family life. You know you have a passion. Family life. Who is that? Education. Family life. Who is represented? Okay, I will too. Appreciate her. Someone in politics and governance. You know that there is grace for you in that area. Make sure you know what you are standing for. If you are not sure, please go back to your seat. Hallelujah. Please come up and face the congregation, all of you. Uh, someone in arts and entertainment. Fashion. You're a beauty, you are a beauty, uh, what do we call it, makeup artist, beautician. Where are you? Oh, she looks it. No problem, just come up. You are a pastor. Why are you laughing? You people always think, come on, pastor, beautiful. One more person. Come on, celebrate her. I like people who are bold and confident. Hallelujah. Alright, so just group yourself. Fashion, beauty, this side. Next, music. Next, your what? Decoration. Education, two of you. Beautiful. Please stand. Family life, politics and governance. Hallelujah. All of you attend Koinonia, right? Hallelujah. Okay. Um, sweetheart, come. Now, you are a pastor walking in grace. You've attended our miracle services, right? And you've seen the grace of God. And as a Christian who has been built, you have the opportunity to talk in a bereavement. Now, you walk in miracles. You walk in signs and wonders, but a family has lost their loved one. And they just push you as you are now. Alright? With the knowledge of what we have been training, the building and everything. How would you approach? How would you communicate the light of Christ and comfort the family? Make your mistakes. Don't be afraid. This is a training ground. Nobody, I assure you, listen. Nobody will look at you and speak whatever you can. I'm comforting you here. I'm standing by your side. Okay? Alright. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. Are there living souls here? Praise, praise, praise the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, to me, I'll go to such family because, you know, life without Jesus, if that family are not from, are not, maybe, let me say, they don't know much about Christ. Because you cannot just go into a family and just start, you understand. If they don't know about Christ, you first preach Christ to them. Praise the Lord. And also, you cannot do it by your own power. You need God. Praise the living God. Before you go and meet any family, you need to go on your knees. Not only on your knees, you need to go to God. God, I want to go to that family. What do you want me to say? How do you want me to comfort them? Praise the living God. Hallelujah. And with the help of God, you see that God will give you what to say. 
Praise God. God bless you. Come on, please appreciate her. Yes, we are proud of you. You are learning very well. Hallelujah. That's the life of a minister. You never do things without the leadership of the Holy Spirit. That's all I was looking for. This is what we are teaching you. Are you following me now? How many of you like Koinonia 101? No carryover. No carryover whatsoever. Hallelujah. So that you be established. When you step out, you should know that you have been trained. When you graduate from AB, you behave like an Abu Sayyid. And you know you are smart. You cannot graduate from ABU and behave as if you did not go to school. Hallelujah. So when you are going to a bereaved family, you don't just go arrogantly and go and meet them and say, do you know that we attend miracle service and we are all these kind of things. You are behaving like a child here. If you don't know what to say, what do you do? Keep quiet. There is wisdom in silence. I told you to read the book of Proverbs. The moment you are in the midst of people, especially elderly people, and you don't know what to say, shut your mouth. That's what Elihu did until wisdom came unto him. Hallelujah. Politics and governance. Come, sir. We live in a very corrupt country. Hallelujah. Where every Tom, Dick, and Harry has access to a part of the national treasury. Anybody can loot. Hallelujah. And now you become the chairman of a local government. There's subvention, there's allocation, eh? there's, there's everything for you. And now we have taught you to represent Christ. Assuming you have to address your leaders, Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, free thinkers, wicked people, demons, all kinds of people. And now you are supposed to communicate the life of Christ. You have been receiving the teachings here. Listen, if you cannot translate the word that you are receiving here into a practical reality, we have been wasting our time. Hallelujah. Go ahead, sir. Feel free. Express yourself. Praise God. Two minutes. In a country like Nigeria where there is high level of incubation of um, corruption, I, as one, pardon the whole um, pattern of um, bureaucracy and so on and so forth but there's a need for strategic planning we saw that in the life of Jesus Christ where he was able to coordinate his disciples in assigning um, respective assignments to them um, all around you know and in the same regard you being able to contend with um, society is another aspect which you need to put into consideration which Jesus Christ continually was um, faced with um, challenges from the Sadducees and the Pharisees but consistently the application of wisdom which of course didn't just come um, naturally but he prayed and actually wisdom was then granted unto him he was commissioned into his assignment and so the same will I do Amen Okay, so you have not told us what you are going to tell them so assuming you are addressing a group of people what give us one solution that can help to bring good governance in this country we are tired of nonsense speak to us good governance is an active role in key participation everybody has um, based on the from a kingdom perspective not social studies all right from a kingdom perspective participation one major aspect which we need to do is actually not looking at the importance of any office but actually operating with a mindset of humility you just said not quite long ago humility is a revelation it is not um an understanding Amen. hallelujah and so as a christian when you go into public office it's not for you the waiting day for all you have will chop they have they have chopped their own no as a christian you must go with the attitude of servanthood your blessing is tied to the operation of the economy of the kingdom not in looting from the treasury hallelujah and you face a lot of challenges because there are people above you but you must refuse to compromise don't go and steal money and come and lie to us in the church and carry small and say joshua selman this is for you to go on air we will drive you away with it that's why we are believing the word of god for ourselves hallelujah so when we vote you sir Make sure you represent Christ. Now I can talk to you. But when you get there, when you forget one night, you will dream of Koinonia. And you will dream 
of this warning, God will threaten you and say, Mr. Man, he will do to you what he did to Adeboe. The day you mess up, I will raise you from the ground. We are proud of you. Go and represent the kingdom. Family life. Hallelujah. Marriage right now is a union between two things. Anything. A man and a whale. A fish and, 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 and anything. A man and a baby. I've said it again. If you are considering marriage, it is paramount that the partner you are thinking about must be of the opposite sex. Hallelujah. It's amazing that the Senate in Nigeria can be debating gay marriage. A man and a man, a woman and a woman, we call it human rights. And that westernization and that nonsense is creeping through films. Is there anybody in media here? No, media. Media. Come on. We cannot move without the media. Who is there? We need one person from the media. Quickly. Alright, family life, ma. Now, you are supposed to talk sense into family. There's all kinds of things going on. A man believes the wife is his slave. The wife believes the man is whatever. Everybody comes with every... How do you approach from a kingdom perspective? What do you think is the solution to restoring discipline and godliness? In America, a child is 14 years old. The mother says, sit down here and I'm going to see you to court. And the child slaps his mother and we call it human rights. Isn't it? And when you get a cane and whip the child, we call it all kinds of names. I don't plan to beat my children, but I plan to discipline them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, the Bible says that now we have a more sure word of prophecy and we have the Bible to always go back to. Praise the Lord. And um, as Maru said, that when a purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So in the family, everybody has his or her place. Hallelujah. The father, the priest of the home, and then the mother and all that. And um, I know women, lately there have been um, women trying to, um, is it, campaign for their place, for their rights, hallelujah. But from the scripture, it, it's um, obvious where the place of the woman is, where the place of the man is, the children and all that. So um, what I would do as a person, of course, seeking, having sought for the leadership of the Holy Spirit is to... Um, bring to the consciousness of the people your place hallelujah as a child as a father as a mother hallelujah and then to trust the Holy Spirit to lead us hallelujah amen bless you beautiful how many of you are proud of the people this is just a random sample it's a true proof of whether we are making progress or not hallelujah praise the Lord media in five minutes, a nation can become, become drug addict or, or because a celebrity went on air. He was allowed to go on Channel O or MTV. Alright? And you see all kinds of things. And now we have on YouTube, iPad, everything you can... I mean, you just need to go on YouTube, there's everything free pornography, how to shoot guns, how to kill people. Now God is sending you to the media. You are an apostle to the media. What do you think you can do? Or how do you plan to approach to bring the kingdom? Thank God for TV stations, Christian TV stations. I think you should appreciate every ministry and every servant of God around the world that has a TV station. It's a breath of fresh air in this jungle of Babylon. Every channel you tune into, there are lies. The media, people tell lies. They are manipulated by government. God gives you a television ministry. Will you let me be on your TV ministry? 
Most definitely, sir. Uh, because you're my teacher. And the, the, main, the main reason why the every being was created is to give glory unto God. And every invention of man is an extension of the creation of God. So if the media was created by man, it means that the purpose of the media is to bring glory to God. And if it's not glorifying God, then the purpose of it has been defeated. So, most definitely, if I get to own a television station, when I get to own a television station, thank you, sir, it, 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 the Bible would be the only law that is followed. If it is out of the scriptures, then it is not existing. Hold on. I hope you know that right now on TV stations, many TV stations, you can't say Jesus, even God is becoming an issue. You must say divine or just something or highest something in the highest whatever it is paper ufos whatever in the highest so how do you plan to come in bluntly do you plan to be very blunt about jesus christ Extremely first blunt. of all so that we we'll know now whether we need to talk to you or i am extremely blunt about jesus christ and it will be replicated in every institution that is established that the lord used me to establish if we can't say the name of jesus christ on air then there is no business being in the business of media. Because Jesus is the person that we're looking up to. He's the being. He's the most divine thing. He's the creator of the universe. He's the creator of the person that created media. So most definitely, if we cannot revive him on air, then we have no business being on air. So Jesus would be the yardstick for every single thing. For an advert to come on air, we must first check it. What is the implication of this advert on people? There are theories that guide the media. And these theories are one of the most popular theories in the media is the magic bullet theory. That tells you that the media has the power to act exactly the way a bullet pointed at a human being will act. That once it shoots you, it takes effect immediately. Uh, that meaning that it has a way of reforming your mindset. It has a way of transforming your mindset. So we must look at every single content from that perspective. Is this television program, how is it going to affect the people, positively or negatively? Teaching our people how to prepare for war. Will it affect them positively or negatively? Showing a news that, of something that has happened uh, in somewhere. Will it affect the people positively or negatively? Accepting some musical videos. Will it affect the people positively or negatively? If it does not affect the people positively, then it cannot go on air. Because if it does not affect the people positively, then it means that it is definitely going to be destroying lives. It's, going to, it's not only going to be destroying the immediate life that you are seeing. But it's going to be destroying generations to come. Because it's what you have learned today that your seed will replicate. So, if it is not in the scripture, it is not going to be on air. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is powerful. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. These guys will do what they are talking about. They are not pretending it. And I like his competence. You see him now? So you can talk to a group of unbelievers who are media people. So we are not just training you to pray in tongues alone. There is a place of creativity. There is a place of digging deep. You know where God is calling you to begin to build and prepare. I never knew there was a theory that governs media. But this is smart. You are learning something right now. Hallelujah. Don't just be spiritually braced up. You must be competent enough to invade the cosmos. And bring intelligent presentation of the kingdom. How many of you know Ravi Zacharias? One intelligent apologetic. He stood and preached before atheists and all kinds of people. Communicating the wisdom of the word. Hallelujah. Education. We have all kinds of people, students being victimized. University of Abuja, they've asked the students to go and relocate. You can imagine after spending years of work because of the corruption of the administration. Those in final year will have to go and start scouting for universities to start again. This is the recent announcement. Allocations that are sent to the educational sector don't reach. Everybody chops his own. NUC gets his own. Everybody gets his own. There's project from educational tax fund to build universities, build roads, build all of these things. And they are not being effective. After five years, they build and say 1999 project. They do it in 2005. So how do you, if you become the vice chancellor of Amadou Bello University in 2000 and 
What, do, what don't you like today that you think you can change? Quickly, one minute. Praise the Lord. Firstly, the Bible says, He who lacks wisdom, let him ask of the Lord who give it liberally. That's the first thing. So, if I'm the Vice Chancellor, I would like all students to know that as, as children of God, we are ambassadors of heaven. That's the first thing. We are ambassadors of heaven. Which means that we are representing God. So everybody, as long as you ask for the course you want to read in your field, God is sending you there to effect a change. Definitely. And God is a God of... He, he, has, he plans His things right before time. So He has sent before you. So if, you ask definitely of, if we ask definitely of God, He has sent us to effect a change. So if I was a VC and... Um, of ABU or whichever school, the first thing I will do, the very first thing I will do, is to bring up programs, not only education line. Because nowadays I found out that, okay, for, exa- for example, last week I was opportunity to be on a particular program. Okay. A particular program I'm going to bring up is an idea, idea, idea challenge program. Something that can boost up um, students' IQ. So that in the nearest future, they can actually stand on their own and do something independent on their, on their own with God. So that's what I'm going to do. Are you going to increase lecturer salary? Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you. Education too. What do you have to say? 20 seconds. Amen. Well, mine will go to the part of the student. Because seriously, I think what is eating deep into our educational sector these days is laziness on the part of the students. That is, we rely on examination my my practice. I think that is what that is what pains me most. In the part if, you of become, if you become the, the, the what do they call the director of JAM? Well, as the, if when I become director of JAM, I will definitely look for the right way. But I think being director of JAM is really going too far. I'm looking at it in a, in a place whereby before the students come to write exams, who are they actually? Because whatever JAM have in place, it is actually what a student actually is that he goes to do. Because JAM have brought up so many innovations, but exam my practice is the more they bring up new innovations, the more people devise ways. So we have to look for a way that to, to make students know that they can do it on their own. Because what we have now is students who don't really believe in themselves. We believe that you see people come and pray, 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 and at the end of the day you go to the exam hall. After reading that you still go, what was your prayer for in the first place? If you really pray and believe that God is going to answer your prayer, I don't believe we should still go into exam. My prayer. So I'm looking at it in a personal way. As a student, look at it that you can do it with the help of God. If you can pray to God and read your books, you can do it on your own. Hallelujah. Powerful. So when, when you get into the educational sector, organize programs that encourage students. Alright? Organize programs that encourage students on billboards of schools instead of writing Socrates, say, write, you can make it, you can believe it. Draw the student in every faculty, draw students receiving their convocation certificate before they step into their lecture theaters. That's what they are seeing, they will become what they are seeing. Hallelujah! That's how to apply scripture. Music, come, music, we've had. People deceive us in church. We sponsored them. They went on air. They produced album. We bought it. Marketed it for them. Only for them to go on air. And then sign up with something we don't understand. They started reducing Jesus to God. God to divine. Divine to you. You to her. Her to queen. Queen to princess princess to us are you aware of the challenge that you have to face in the music industry 
What's your resolve? Praise God. Um, one thing is this. Mus- you don't do music because you see others excel in music. You do music because it's a calling. It's a gift. And one thing we need to realize is that you can't give what you don't have. For you to give life, you need to have life. For you to minister anointing, you need to have anointing. You need to be grinded in the word of God. Music is not what will come outside and just start shouting. You can even, you, with a rough voice, you can minister anointing to people. Your private time, we should have quality time with God in our private, in our privacy. You need to give what you have. Not just come and make sure of your voice and your, your, your vocal prowess. To, to minister life, you need to have life. And the word of God should be taken seriously. God should be our inspiration. Hallelujah. Have you written any song? Name two Christian gospel artists in Nigeria that you know. That song. Frank Edward. God bless you. Appreciate him, please. Please go back. If you tell us you are called into ministry and we tell you name two gospel ministers and, and you are chewing your mouth, we will not castigate you but will tell you go and sit down. Right? Then you pass paper and say, I want to minister in Colonia. We say, No, go and sit down. Work on yourself first. Hallelujah. Stand out. Okay. Praise the Lord. Came to realize that in our today's world, there are many souls are dying. There is someone that God wants to use to pull children to the kingdom of God. I want to take the example of Michael Jackson, the king of pop. If Michael just should be a child of God, the crowd, he has moved proud to the world. But if that person is saved and he has pulled this crowd, all of them will make it to heaven. So when he died and I saw the crowd that are coming to him for his burial, it was a challenge to me. I said, this one, if it is for God now, what will happen? Could have been a great soul winner. Praise the Lord. Now when I was told that Sarah, you are called to sing, and I say, God, can I sing? I don't know how to sing, but I admire people singing for your glory. And I don't know anything about music, but I submit. And anytime I stand and I handle the mic, I see the power of God moving. And I say, Lord, connect me to the people that will train me so that when I come out, when you announce me, that voice, that the people that are waiting for me, that unsaved soul that are waiting for me, will come and bow down before the truth by administration in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Two music schools for you. Steve Strings has his music school. Ruben has his music school. Go and meet him. You will talk with him. He will train you. He's very gifted in that area. Go and meet him now. Hallelujah. Fashion. Who is? Okay, we'll soon round up. There is, there is a reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. Hallelujah. Fashion. Ah! Right now in the world, every day, Versace, Gucci, um, Boss, everybody is bringing up everything. Huh? All kinds of perfumes, all kinds of things. Alright? And uh, we have everybody, all kinds. Right now, you see naked ladies on perfumes that are for men. I mean, completely naked. And, you know, all kinds of things. So how do we... By the way, let me tell you something. For music guys, do you realize that when Michael Jackson died, in three days, the album that he was supposed to use for his tour sold $120 million in three days after his death. People went to buy it. So music brings you to a position where you are an influence over people. That's the right time to communicate Christ. Hallelujah. So fashion. We have fashion parade, tarabangs, all of the people. How do you plan to compete with those world class people? They are very good. They are very competent. They are not small at all. All they are Brazilian, we've all, all of these things. How do you plan to come in with it? Hmm? 
They are Mary Kay, they are Gucci Rush. Hallelujah. As a good designer, you must have to go out. Seek. Okay, through that, you must have to be careful. There are some perfumes that you must have to be careful when you are putting it. You understand? You must have to be. Let him talk. What is your business? I asked you to come out. You didn't come out. You must have to be very careful because in every aspect of this life, you bring out fashions. There are some fashions that they are evil. You understand? So, spiritually, you must have to say no for that. that let, I'm just assuming. This, this is a shirt. Isn't it? I wear this shirt today. You don't know how it comes. It's coming about that. And you go out looking for it. No, without knowing that this shirt is from, maybe, from evil uh, 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 spirits. You, you begin to go and buy it. So, you must have to be very careful. Spiritually, allow the spirit to lead you in every fashion that you are wearing or you are putting. Like so many girls, they are backsliding. You will see their heads putting. Appreciate him. Come on, appreciate him. Encourage him. Hallelujah. Paul said, anyone who is not against us is for us. Come on, appreciate him. God bless you. Yeah. Hallelujah. What's that? Boutique. Beauty, makeup artist. Education. Oh, both. Come, makeup artist. Oh. Hallelujah. We'll give you one minute. I'm, I'm very serious about it. I'm, I'm a strange man of a person. Hallelujah. One minute, all right? How do you plan to make our sisters nice and beautiful, all right? Without causing the brothers to go to hell. <laughs> brothers, am I speaking? Yeah. Am I speaking? Yeah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I will try by the grace of God to see that I make them up in such a way that to the glory of God, you make up to the glory of God and not to the glory of man. And just like I see it as a calling, I, I know it's not normal. It's not just a normal thing. Look good as in, you know, the right thing to wear, the right thing to put on. Even your lipstick to glorify God. Your eye pencil or whatever your powder should glorify God not the one you, you put on and look like a masquerade praise God hallelujah in other words they are asking ladies how many percent of you is the real you hallelujah as we all know essence of everything is bad um, you can always look beautiful um, doing your makeup lightly not too um, too bold and when you are um, making up you, you should go with what you're wearing I, I like, like now when you're applying pow uh, powder or um, our foundation whatever it's Okay, as a, as, as a Christian makeup artist, I will advise that you make up lightly. Don't make it too shouty. You still look beautiful the way. Praying in tongues makes you beautiful. That's a big secret, I'm telling you. I know you will not agree. That's a big secret. I'm telling you. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in your mortal body, that same spirit will quicken, vitalize. Hallelujah. Praise God.
Praise God. Um, I told some of my friends that sometimes when I get jobs, and then you look at the people you're about to make up, you can't help but start praying. Hallelujah. Because sometimes you don't know where to start from. Again, I'd like to say that trend changes, but style is, doesn't change at all. So the best thing to do, like she said, is moderation. Hallelujah. Now, the problem we have in the fashion world is that we ladies, we don't want to wear what this, this lady is wearing. All of us, we want to look different, you know. So to an extent, we try to overdo things. But the secret is just this. Look 60% the trend and then 40% your own spice. Thank you. Hallelujah. Look, let me tell you something. Listen to me. Save yourself headache and don't die for nothing. Do the best you can and leave the rest of God. Don't kill yourself and say, I must look this. Must you do it? Who is complaining about how you are looking? See, there, there's pressure to be everything. I don't dress because this is a trend. Hallelujah. I dress when I like something, I wear it. You don't put me under pressure and say, this is how men of God, I don't know what they believe. I don't know what they are doing. Don't put yourself under pressure, especially ladies. Say, ah, this we born is 5,000. You have 6,000, you are dying to use the 5,000 and fix it. Wash the one that you have and, and use it again. Who said you keep using it for the rest of your life? Is it only your roommates that will know? Hallelujah. We put ourselves under all kinds of pressure. Blackberry, you must use the Blackberry. You must use this. If your phone does not have camera, you are embarrassed. You beg your friend to help you. You are not an ambassador. You, have, you look older than your age. Because if you keep doing that for years, you, you will look, the stress will kill you. Appreciate all these people. Go back to your seat. God bless you. So together, are we making progress? Hallelujah. I didn't call these people because of a variety tonight. Hallelujah. I called to test at a particular point when Jesus was teaching. He said, 12 disciples come. And he sent them. He said, let me know whether or not we are making sense. And they came back. He sent the 70. And the Bible says they came back rejoicing. And they said, even the devils were subject to us in thy name. Hallelujah. It's important for us to know that there is transformation and there is change happening in the life of everybody. Not everybody is going to be a pastor here, true or false. So our ministry is not just for pastors. Not everybody here is going to be a, an entrepreneur, a business person. Not everybody, maybe not everybody will even marry. I didn't say God said it. I said not everybody. You can choose. Hallelujah. But that whatever it is, the Bible says we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. That's what it means to be an ambassador. An ambassador is the representative of a government. If we, if we just work on ministers alone, what happens to the politicians? That's why Nigeria is suffering. We have men of God, we have no voice in our Senate. And the one or two that are there, the voice of the world will strangle them to a point that they have no voice. We don't want it to happen that way. There is a strategy that God is giving us. Are you following me now? I've said it here that the true apostolic ministry does not just train people. It invades people and shifts cultures, systems. So whether it's Steve Strings or, um, or Jimmy on air, Jimmy, when we see you on exclusive to divinity, or um, Alheri doing our fashion, whatever, you know, all of these things that we can see that Christ is being directly before now the church has taught that the only way to train people is to just get them to pray, get them to study the Bible, hallelujah and then have their nice and small house but there are policies being formed every day and we are suffering the consequences. If we do not have voices that rise in these systems, a time will come the church will be strangled. Are you listening to me? In a place like Zaria, it's very difficult to give a church a land. Hallelujah. 
There are many difficult ways. So don't say it does not matter. Otherwise, a time will come when certain policies will be put together. Do you know right now in which of the countries, I don't know, they officially permitted gay, alright? And not just gay, but the gay can choose any church that they want to wed. So they can come for koinonia now and say you must wed us. And if you do not, the government will seize your license. You know it's only in Nigeria that you can start ministry when you like. Abroad, you, there, are, there are ways you do it. In, 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 you don't just do it whether you're a miracle worker or not. Are you following me now? So you can imagine that that kind of thing. Don't say it cannot come to Nigeria. This is spiritual. And if believers do not rise in that area, if God does not have a voice, we are in trouble. Hallelujah. And this is what kingdom invasion is all about. This is the principle that great men like Sondia Delaja used. And they caused the orange revolution in Ukraine. A city that is a racist nation. But he brought a revolution in that city. And forever, his name will be in the sands of time as a revivalist. The church must become a platform for training and building. Believers must be able to come to church and not just get educated, but get equipped and trained. Believers are not idiots. We are intelligent people. We are just spiritual. That's all. It doesn't mean we don't have common sense. The church has taught believers to kill away your common sense. That the way you love God is have no sense of reasoning again. So the moment you step out of church, you have no relevance to the system whatsoever. We need believers that can have a voice both in the system. Jesus spoke to Pharisees, the government of the land. He had something when he went to farmers and business people. He could communicate to them. He went to prostitutes and the outcasts. He could relate with them. Jesus could relate with every strata of society. He met the military people. He had something to tell them. He understood the law to the point that when Caesar came, he said, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. He understood the legal side of ministry. Paul had this understanding. A time came, it was not his anointing that saved him. He said, look, let me tell you, I am a Jew. I was trained under Gamaliel. A Pharisee to the core. I understand these principles. Don't take it for granted that I'm preaching the cross. Doesn't mean I'm an idiot. I'm an intelligent scribe and Pharisee. And it saved him. By the way, let me tell you, Paul was not a tent maker. Alright? Paul made prayer shawls, not tents. To add it to your Bible knowledge, Paul was not a tent maker. The translators made a mistake. His job was prayer shawls, not tents. Hallelujah. Do you believe that we are the revivalists that are going to shake this nation? Do you believe that we are the ones who will arise? Do you believe that above and beyond ABU, above and beyond Zaria, there is an international anointing upon your life. This is what God told me to do tonight. Do you believe that all these teachings on faith, we are teaching on faith, we are teaching on character, we are teaching on giving. You know, I've been so, I'm sure the ministers have been impressed by the turnout of Titus again and again and the way people are becoming obedient to the word of God. Hallelujah. We are teaching these things. Grooming, equipping. This is what it means to equip, to supply the tools that it takes to rule and to reign. I assure you, you will not regret what you are doing. Many of you will thank God that you pass by Zaria in your destiny. Hallelujah. We are God's workmanship. Say, I am his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. I am absolutely confident. Listen to me. Listen to me. Do you know that seated among us here, if only God can open our eyes prophetically to see the caliber and the class of people who are seated here. ABU did not know that they would graduate such great generals. Today they celebrate generals all around. If they had known that all of these men today who are generals and world-renowned figures, this is how I've said something. I said this thing right from the days we used to meet at the back of um, at the back of, of chapel. 
I said we are going to be great in life. And the beautiful part is we will all know ourselves. We will be related to one another. Hallelujah. Creating a kingdom community is the key to sustaining kingdom values. We are not wasting our time. This is not just church as usual. Oh, you jot and write, hallelujah, you get up. Uh -uh. That you leave koinonia with a resolve in your heart. Without this understanding, your Christianity becomes boring. Because you don't know what else to do when you are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. We do not know that Christianity is not just a religion of servitude, but it's a call to responsibility where we can represent Christ. So you see that every time you are building, while you are in class, others just want to pass and go. You are conscious of the fact that I am an ambassador. So they are just doing malpractice. They are not even listening to what the lecturer is saying because they want to go. But you know that I am different. Hallelujah. When people are getting thorough, you are serious, you are buying books, you are building. You lock yourself, you are fasting like that gentleman for five days. Why will someone be fasting? Our media department just a week or two finished, I think, five or seven days fast. How can a media department be fasting? For what? To hold camera? But this is how much they see where they are going. Listen. Your comprehension of where God is taking you determines how much you are willing. If you know you are going far, it will not be a burden for you to prepare right now. Are you listening to me? The way many of us are preparing, we plan to end in Zaria, or to end in Kaduna State, or to end in the North. I told myself something. I said, before my parents go to be with the Lord, they will know they gave birth to a son. Indeed. Hallelujah. Can your parents say that about you? Or they just look at you and when you are getting married, your father just look at you and say, Thank God. Thank God. 29 years of misery. Thank God. We are his workmanship. I bring you a message. Very simple message tonight. That the Lord is counting on you. The Lord is counting on ambassadors and generals. Don't just grow up and get old. Realize that you have an assignment. Shout it. Say, I have an assignment. I have a mandate. I am not a non-entity. I am going somewhere to happen. Yes. Yes. I'm telling you. I know this about my life. I knew this years ago. And today by grace I have the privilege to teach and talk to God's people. It's not a mistake. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Please Steve stand up. He was my roommate. We were roommates. Hallelujah. And what happened? Those times he used to bring keyboard. Room 155, old block. He will bring keyboard and I will be on the keyboard and he will be on the guitar. And then Andy, now Ambassage, who received a, a, one of the awards as, as, as the best gospel rapper. That was where we will worship. Then no koinonia, no apostle, who apostle can, no nothing. No money to buy any suits like this, no nothing. Nobody calling you sir, no nothing, but we believe. And Steve would play the guitar. I remember sometimes during our, our devotion in the morning, other people from other rooms would come because we would worship. I'll never forget the time we had a divine visitation. We were worshiping and we held our hands, three of us, and we prayed in tongues and there was such a dense presence of God. And that was how we lay down and slept there. The power of God. I remember those times I'll be sitting down and the power of God would come upon me so much and I'll just look for them and just be lay hands. <laughs> Those were days of practice. We are still under practice, but a higher level of practice. Who would have known? He didn't have the name Strings yet. But today, the grace of God has made him a voice around. And everywhere you go to, you say Steve Strings, people clap. And some of you admire him and say, oh dear. 
just like many of you will stand five years from now and look at your congregations. Yes. Yes. Yes, you'll be married to the pastor. And when you stand and see every kind of misbehavior, you address it squarely. And they ask you, where did you learn this kind of thing from? You say, I remember. There used to be one, one big-mouthed young guy like this in Zaria that would not let us rest. Yeah, how come you are walking and you are prophesying like this? Yeah, there was one yellow guy. And I saw the way you prophesy. And every time you are making your congregation laugh and they say, where did you learn it from? Come on, tell me who you say was doing it. Yes. This is where God is taking us. Steve Strings, I just brought him up to tell you. And this is only the beginning. I will not be surprised today if I see Steve Strings playing and you are watching KICC and you just start and say, tell me I'm dreaming. This is Steve. Don't say you are dreaming. You think he's playing. Or one day suddenly you have been praying that I won't go on air. I will go one day. Let me assure you. I know many of you are praying and say, Kai, oh God, please, all these kind of people, don't go. I will go. God will take me there. And you will be part of the partners. Because God will speak to you and you are promised to be obedient. Hallelujah. I believe what I'm saying with the whole of my heart. This is not the end of ENI. This is not the end of Koinonia. This is just a step out of the cave compared to where we are going. For your life. I may not know you by name. Listen to me. You are lost in the crowd sitting here. That was how I used to sit down years ago when men of God are preaching. I'll be in FCS sitting quietly and men of God will come and preach. Say, Some of you, the grace of God is upon your life and lost in that crowd. And today, by grace, this is how some of you, by grace, will be called out. This is how some of you will stand. Some of you will be the Dangotes and the Otedolas. And they'll be asking you, to say, how come Nigeria is booming in agriculture like this? And you say, there is one called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, as a businessman, you say, yes. Yes. You not just say God. Those of you who said God here, I hope you know the God you are talking about. I believe this with all my heart. This is what we are striving after. Some of you are seated here. You will have ministries, you will be the next Benny Hinds. You know I'm not lying. The Spirit of God tells you that what this guy is saying is not a lie. Some of you women will move in strange anointings. You will move in the anointings of Catherine Kuman, The anointings of Amphi McPherson. Madame Gunion. Maria Woodward Ita. You will bring revival in this nation. I know it. We are going to pray. Just for five or ten minutes and then we are done. This is my message tonight. I kept thinking about this all through. And I was wondering, I said, Lord, you really want me to do this? And the Lord said, yes. We are going to rededicate ourselves and say, Lord, here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life I want to give in serving my fellow man. Doing the will of God. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Here is I want to give, I want to give In serving my fellow man Doing the will of God Here is my life Here is my life Here is my life Rise up on your feet Here is my life Here is my life Come on, sing Go ahead and 
begin to pray and say, Lord, here is my life. Pray, say, Lord, I'm the one Joshua Selman has been talking about. You will commit great ministries to the nation. You will commit anointings into my hands. You will commit grace. Pray. Say, Lord, you are talking about me tonight. Here is my life. Pray. Kingdom invasion. Invading the cosmos. I am God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Bible says, you are a royal priesthood. You are an holy nation. A peculiar people. Called to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness. Into his marvelous light. Pray. Say, Lord, I will change my sphere of influence. Wherever you are sending me to. Pray. Here is my life. Pray me. Let the wisdom of Israel come. Let the anointing of Ezekiel come. Let the prosperity of Solomon come. Let the leadership of Joseph come. Pray. Let the grace of Esther come. Let the favor of Jesus come. Let the anointing of Paul come. Let the prophetic dimension of Agabus come. Pray. Let the evangelistic grace of Philip come. I receive grace. Hallelujah. Listen. Now we are going to pray. Every call of an ambassador, write it, is a call unto responsibility. And responsibility entails preparation. Preparation entails sacrifice. Every call of an ambassador, you are not at your best yet. No matter how great you are. I'm speaking to generals tonight. You are not at your best yet. You know how to weave. Why are you stopping there? You know how to make hair. Why are you stopping there? Every time, let me teach you something. Every time, go on your knees before God and pray on your giftings and pray on your skill. Say, Lord, let an anointing come upon it. If you are going to have the next McDonald's, say, Lord, there will be an anointing. It will be a platform to heal the sick. That your eatery will be known as a miracle center. Hungry people will come and eat and live with more than just satisfaction. There's a song I've been slaughter sang. He said, What's that you have in your hands? I can use it only if you are willing to lose it. I learned it from Jan Fa. Years ago it was his song. He liked it. I tried to learn it from him. I, I just couldn't get it. He said, I'll take the little that you have and make it brand new. Why? Because I am El Shaddai. Tonight, can you submit your giftings? And say, Lord, it may not be much, but it can change nations. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I surrender my giftings and my skill. It may not be much. I may just know how to set sound. But Lord, take it tonight. Use it for your glory. Anoint it. I know I don't have a voice. I'm a shy person. But breathe upon this servant of yours. And make a voice out of me. I just know how to do beauty, makeup and fashion. Please upon it, O God, and give me a voice to the nations. I will stand for you. Lord, I don't know how to preach. I only have a passion for the lost. And the Lord is saying, I will anoint you. What you have is enough. Come on, pray. Lord, this is what I have. Two loads and five, five fish. Lord, can it feed 5,000 people? Yes, it can. Lift up your two loaves and five fish of talent. Lord, I am not eloquent. I cannot speak good English. I didn't go to a good school, but I desire to serve you. Yes, you can take you and make a wonder. He made a wonder out of his camera. 
Lord, my village is not in the map of Nigeria. Lord, I don't know my purpose in life, but I love you. Yes, he can use you. That's a good place to start. Lord, I don't know why I'm here on earth, but you can start from here. I don't know where you are taking me, oh God, but I'm willing. I'm available. I'm available. I will not disappoint you. I am available. Hallelujah. Run away. Listen to me. Run away from any company of friends that are visionless people and will not help you where you are going. I don't care how long you are with them. Even if they grew up in your yard, this is the time to tell them, look, I am going somewhere. Abraham got to a point where he told his servants, you cannot follow me from here. It's not that I hate you, but where I'm going requires that I carry my sacrifice alone. Many of you, that's the decision that will make God start using you. This one leg in here, and then another leg there. Better take the other leg this night and get you. Sit down, buy books. Go to Jordan Bookstore. Jordan is there. Buy the books. You may have only Gary. Run away from that stupid faith message that teaches you that if you don't have anything now, your faith is not working. Sit down with your Gary and buy the books and, and, and drink it honorably. The great drank Gary like that too. There was a time we drank it and we drank it honorably. We ate bread and put granite inside and drank it with ten eras obo and we were praying in tongues. Don't think we didn't do it. Oh yes, we did it. The time we took ginger, I killed two birds with one stone. Because I used to sing there. So I used the ginger to, that's all I could get, and then I'll exercise my voice. Ten naira bread. And we put granite inside, and eat it and say, Lord, you are faithful. Now you are getting only beans, and you are saying for the past four days I've eaten beans. And they've taught you that's not a sign of faith. Use your money to buy books. Buy the tree. Sit down. Don't buy suits. You don't need to look like Joshua Selman. It took me years to get here. Don't frustrate yourself. Some of the suits I'm having, people sold it into my life. Nobody will sew it into your life yet. So stop trying to say, I'm trying to look. Mm -mm. Go and sit down. Sit down with your one trouser. Wash it. Iron it. Carry your Bible. You can't afford a concordance, but you can afford 100 Naira Cafe. Other people are browsing in the day. Beg your friend for his internet, for his mother, and sit down and brown. You are signing a track record in the realm of the spirit. The lady, don't sit down and say, Oh, come and marry me. Go and find out how to be a mother, how to be a wife, how to be a minister. Go and ask people that are married. Buy shoes and go and greet our, our, our mommy prophets here. Our mommy, Nankwa's mother is here. Buy shoes and go and greet them. Pastor William's wife is here. Buy shoes one day and go and greet and say, Mommy. What will you advise me as a young lady? You're going around and saying, Who will come and marry me? Who will come and marry me? Hallelujah. And I say, Guy, stop claiming the life of successful people. And sit down and start asking them what they did to get to where they are, they are getting to. All those I claim, I claim, I claim. You see, and yeah, I claim. You even draw it. You will draw it and sit down and see it there. I tell you, it will not come to pass. Hallelujah. You can buy Zobo. I know that we have not attained yet, but there is something we can tell you. Hallelujah. Make pepper soup and run and corner Jake's and say, Jake's, please, God is sending me to the nations. We went to massacre. We went for Panchin Crusade. We have gone for crusades. Jake single handedly, as an undergraduate student, took over the church of God in. in in Shika, the church of God in Giwa, we used to tease him and say, yes, Giwa, Giwa Church or Giwa Assembly. He was the president of, uh, of Gospel Team. He has something to say. It's time for you to begin to respect the grace and the people around you. You can look at your roommate. Stop looking at your roommate as your roommate. Start looking at the anointing upon your roommate. You may be 10 years older than the person. Hallelujah. Very important. The person may even be your mother. 
One day come and kneel down before your mother, not as your mother, but as the servant of God. And say, bless me. Let your hand touch my head. Open up a door of destiny. We did it in Lagos. Abi, there was a time we met Mommy Oche. That family is an enviable family. All of us got down on our knees. He said, Mommy, we will not, go, we will not come back to Lagos until something happens. And that woman lay. See, let me tell you, we are like bees. We are a product of many blessings. It's not everything we got on our secret place. Follow them who through faith and patience. Some of you who are very rude to elderly people, you see, whether it's your mother or your brother, you see everybody just insults them because you now know how to use Blackberry. Say, honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long. You don't honor them, you will die young. It's not a prophecy, it's the word of God. Men of character and grace. Say, after me, I'm willing to sit down. Say it, I'm willing to sit down. And pay the price. And God will honor me. One more time, say, I'm willing to sit down and pay the price. Yes. Let's see more of you in Jordan Bookstore. Go and meet the media. Collect koinonia messages. God is sending you for ministry. You don't have the tape of anybody. Only the program that you preach. You just preach all kinds of disjointed scriptural things. That's the only tape you have. You are learning. Go and buy. Get these things. They are free. Sit with them. Sit with them. Don't say because they invited you and say, Okay, go and preach in this final year program. Suddenly carry one leader and say, Come, you help me with my itinerary. Sit down, Jerry. When I see people do all those things, I tell them, Sit down. I don't care what you think you are prophesying. I'm not the kind of person you come to me and say, God said, You're going to start. I tell you, Sit down. Sit down. Count the cost. Are you blessed tonight? Lord, we thank you. Give us grace to sit down. I assure you, brothers and sisters. You will bless God for these days of your life. You will bless God. Ask our mothers and our parents and they will tell you as young people we are setting a great foundation. Lord, we give you praise. Be glorified. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Quickly, if you are coming here for the first time, inside and outside, Please appreciate them, celebrate them as they come out. This is your first time of worshipping with us at Koinonia. Please rise up on your feet, jump out quickly. Thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate them. Don't sit back, there is a blessing for you. Come out boldly, come out confidently. God bless you, thank you, inside and outside. Come on, keep clapping, motivate them. Let them know we love them and we appreciate them. Oh. Beauty makeup lady. Good to see you. Thank you, Sas. Thank you, Mars. Hallelujah. How many of you are blessed tonight? Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Meeting put together by Eternity Network International. And our desire is that we come to know the Lord and dedicate ourselves totally to Him. And that we partner with Him. Be ambassadors upon the earth. And I know your life will never be the same. I know that God brought you for a reason and He brought you to change you and to bless you. We want to pray for you right now. And as we pray for you, I want you to receive the prayers that will change your life. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands, saints of God, as we prophesy in the lives of these ones. In the name of Jesus, we declare that you are blessed. You are challenged. You are encouraged. You will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever challenge you came here with, we declare that it is lifted in the name of Jesus. Tonight, God gives you an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Honor and value for the Word of God. Honor and value for the ministry of prayer. Honor and value to be like Jesus Christ. We speak and we prophesy upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so much. I like you to just... Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. 
share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the.